Welcome to Season 5 of the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom, where we talk with enterprise and technology platform leaders about the people, processes, and platforms that make marketing and customer experience successful, scalable, and sustainable. This is what creates an Agile brand. I'm your host, Greg Kilstrom, advisor and consultant for Fortune 1000 marketing and CX leaders and teams as principal and chief strategist at GK5A and best-selling author, keynote speaker, entrepreneur, and Agile certified coach. The Agile Brand Podcast is brought to you by Tech Systems, an industry leader in full-stack technology services, talent services, and real-world application. For more information, go to teksystems.com. To sign up for the Agile Brand newsletter and get the latest insights and articles on marketing technology and CX, or to purchase a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, go to gregkillstrom.com. You can also find all my books on Amazon and other retailers. And now on to the show. I am here in Durham, North Carolina at the 2023 CXPS, that's Client Experience for Professional Services Conference. Today, we're going to talk about CX and professional services and some of the unique challenges and opportunities. To help me discuss this topic, I'd like to welcome Ryan Saddam, Chief Experience Officer at Client Savvy. Ryan, welcome to the show. Hey, Greg, thanks so much for having me. And thanks for being here at CXPS. Yeah, really excited to be, uh, we're a media sponsor here, really excited for the the partnership here. So uh, why, don't, why don't we get started and talk a little bit about your background and your role at Client Savvy? Sure, I uh, co-founded Client Savvy uh, 19 years ago in 2004. We grew this business out of an architecture firm. I uh, told my boss I was gonna leave and go do a tech startup. And he goes, what if we do a uh, tech startup? Nice. And uh, we started building a, a platform to really understand client preferences and didn't quite work. So we uh, asked our, our employees what they wanted. They wanted a whole project management platform and they wouldn't use it. But this little Venn diagram between the two was this idea of client feedback and finding out how are we doing after we've done it. And so we did not set out originally to be where we are. But uh, over the last 19 years, I've just really developed a passion for listening to clients, developing empathy, and then structuring that organizationally at scale. Nice, nice. Yeah, we're going to get back to a little bit in a little bit about, you know, some of the things measuring customer experience and things. First, though, I wanted to, as I mentioned, we're here at uh, the Convention Center in Durham, North Carolina, here for the CXPS conference, something that you've had a, a part in for, for a while now. So let's, let's start by talking about that. And can you give a little background on the CXPS conference, how long you've been doing it, who the target audience is, things like that? Absolutely. So we started this in uh, 2015 in the name client experience for professional services that's that's what we're we're focused on and every professional services firm whether it's engineer architect law firm accounting firm every professional services firm has hr they have marketing they have it they have accounting they have all these these functions that make the business work and so few have yet implemented a dedicated cx function or an organized cx function so after about 10 years in business, we realized the firms we were working with, they all felt alone. They all felt like they were the only ones doing it. And there just weren't professional circles for them to learn from each other or share best practices. So we uh, brought together CXPS really to help bring together the early adopters who were bringing CX into their organizations. And um, we do a lot with knowledge sharing and, and best practices, of course. But if you talk to any of the people here, overwhelmingly what you're going to hear is first and foremost, they feel like this is a community. They feel like this is home. They feel like these are their people. So it's a very progressive audience. And uh, um, because of that, there's real true innovation going on here. So they love being around other innovators like them. That's great. That's great. And so, you know, having done this for five years now, um, certainly you probably are seeing trends in the industry and, and, and things. So are there any themes that you're seeing this year, you know, well, things that are at the top of people's mind that you just had to include in the conference and, you know, what's, what's kind of top of mind? Absolutely. So, um, Ever since the pandemic, the number one challenge we've heard from our clients is a talent identification and retention. So uh, uh, that's been a strong theme. We've got four workshops 
We do a lot of experiential learning here at, I mean, imagine we do experiential learning again at the experience conference. <laughs> so uh, right now we've got three concurrent two and a half hour workshops going on. And uh, two of them right now are, are focused on the employee experience side. One of them's on the, the connection between the client experience and employee experience. So uh, uh, that's a key theme this year. Every year, the last few years, the employee experience side has really increased in importance. But we're also seeing the early signs of recession, uh, some of the leading indicators, uh, uh, some backlog metrics, other things like that are, are starting to surface. So we're also bringing in some strong uh, recession preparation strategies this year, looking across a couple million uh, sentiment data points from the client surveys we've helped firms with. The number one theme that's been coming up more this year than anything else is a real sensitivity to to budgets and pricing. And that's not something we've seen for several years. So whether the market indicators are saying there is a recession or not, there's some of that fear and uncertainty in our client base. And they're telling us if we would just stop and listen. So those are some themes that we're bringing in this year as well. Got it. Got it. Yeah. Again, having done this for a few years, you probably, you can, it's almost a barometer for what's going on in the, in the market, right? Absolutely. What are you most excited about this year at the conference? Oh, you, you know, I, I, I've told the story a few times this week. The uh, week leading up to CXPS is always my most uh, stressful anxiety. I can imagine. Re- because I want it to be amazing. But uh, last night was our welcome re- reception and, and, and just having everyone here, it, it filled my heart. It, it really did. Uh, this is a very emotional week for me because the people here are so amazing. What's incredible about a, um, a CX conference is everyone here is outward focused. They're other oriented. You need that to be a CX leader. So the people here are all very outward focused and uh, really just want to create value, want to deliver value. So my favorite thing is just being around all these value creators who really, truly, passionately share their their best ideas. And, And I've never been to another conference where arch competitors will sit at the same table and just say, here's my playbook, here's your playbook. How do we, uh, you know, compete against each other tomorrow, but we're gonna work together today. And, and I, I love that culture here. Yeah, wonderful. So let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about client or, or customer experience and professional services in general. Um, certainly, you know, on this podcast, we talk a lot about CX in a, in a number of different industries, but professional services, certainly unique. I used to own a marketing agency. I know that, you know, I know both sides of it, I guess you could say, but from, from your perspective, what makes CX and professional services unique? Uh, unique, difficult. I'm not really sure which word you want me to answer uh, there. Uh, uh, um, you know, so, so Uh, Professional services have a lot of defining characteristics that demand a unique approach to client experience. And and I even kind of resist the word customer experience because we have clients, not customers. All clients are customers, not all customers are clients. Professional services, you tend to have very long, complex journeys. The journeys tend to be packaged up as a service delivered as a project, as opposed to a service experience you might have at a restaurant. They tend to be very highly individual. You tend to have like a named project manager or account manager working with named people. I mean, you send Christmas cards to each other. You go to each other's weddings and and celebrate birthdays together. The kind of relationships you build in professional services are very different than you would with a a customer brand. I'm a huge fan of Southwest Airlines. I got a million points. I've got all the status. I don't know the name of anybody yeah, at Southwest yeah. Airlines. It, yeah. Whereas if you hire a lawyer or an engineer or an architect, there's a relationship there. So all of those elements combine to mean uh, um, CX has to be different. I think the other defining characteristic of CX and professional services is that all professional services firms have the same origin story. It's always some guy, some gal with your three initials and they're working for the man and they think they can do it better, but they can't go leave and start their own company without having built some relationships first so they can bring some work with them. No one leaves to start their own professional services firm without bringing some clients with them. 
it takes almost no capital to start a professional services firm. It's, it's your experience, your talent, your hours. All you need is a client. So uh, every professional service firm was founded by someone or you know, three people that uh, built some amazing relationships and realized, hey, I could do better, take these relationships with me. Yeah. So at the root of every origin story is a passion for clients. And boy, I got to keep those clients because that's how I want to pay my mortgage. Yeah. And some of them grow and they succeed, become hundreds or thousands of people. But that means that the baseline in professional services is so much higher than almost every other industry. Yeah. That makes competing really hard when everyone has a baseline of a good. Before we continue, let's take a quick break. If you're like many marketing leaders today, you're inundated with a need to improve the customer experience across an increasing number of channels and touch points, all while ensuring your team is performing well, innovating, and continuously improving. So how do you find the time to determine what's next for you, your team, your brand, and your customers? My company, GK5A, can help. Whether it is advisory services, evaluation of marketing technology platforms and solutions, or digital agencies and implementation partners, or assistance with creating strategic roadmaps and prioritization of efforts, we've done it all and served as an ally to Fortune 1000 brands and industries like financial services, healthcare, consumer electronics, professional services, and more. You can learn more about these services and contact us at www.gk5a. That's www.gk5a.com. Now let's get back to the show. And so, yeah, I mean, given, given that there is that relationship focus, I mean, particularly at the beginning, you know, you're a small firm building, growing, probably, you know, the, the owners or founders have relationships with all of their clients at, to some point, why do professional services firms still kind of struggle, you know, with CX or, or is it, is that not really, is it just not formalized or, you know, why, why is it so important that they really start thinking about CX in a, in a formal practice? Yeah. So those are kind of three different questions. Sure. So uh, I, uh, I can ask if I'm drawing a hand for them. Uh, I wanted to tell uh, her, <laughs> um, CX is difficult in this industry because we conflate service with experience and service is what we do to a client. Experience is what we do with a client. The service is the mechanics. The experience is the emotional reaction your client has with those interactions and those touch points. So I think one of the first gaps is uh, because the baseline in the industry is already pretty good, at least compared to other kinds of businesses and industries, uh, there's a lot of complacency because service is in the name of the industry, professional services, the level of service tends to be pretty high. And we get, again, complacent that the service being good means the experience will be good. And yet experiences are individual, they're human, they're emotional, and there's all kinds of external factors that, that can change the context of your client overnight. And if you're not managing the experience, uh, you're missing out on some opportunities. The other thing I think that makes CX difficult for firms is not just conflating service and experience, but also the uh, very independent spirit nature of professional services. I'm using air quotes here, we're entrepreneurial, which just means everyone kind of does it their own way. And a lot of experience management is about standardization, predictability, and being able to set appropriate expectations in the marketplace and consistently deliver on them. Like you go to any Chick-fil-A, anywhere, any state, and except on Sunday, it's going to be the same experience no matter where you go. And they can pull that off at thousands of locations, independently owned franchise with minimum wage, poorly trained employees. So if you can do that for an $8 box of chicken nuggets, why can't we for an $8 million a design or construction project? I think the third question you asked was, why is it important to, 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 to do client experience? And you know, we're moving more and more towards an experience economy. And you can Google the phrase experience economy. You'll see tens of thousands of, of blogs, videos, podcasts, other things on experience management. The same people who are choosing to stand in line and pay thousands of dollars for the privilege at Disney, you know, the same people who are, are passing by one drive through to go to another because the experience is better, even if the food isn't their favorite, 
the same people who are buying on Amazon and the first thing they do is filter by four stars and up because they want a positive experience are choosing engineers, architects, lawyers, contractors. So uh, um, we have experience-based buyers and the firms that are innovating on experience are exceeding. We did a, a poll here of the audience this morning in the keynote and 67% uh, reported that uh, their firm last year saw above average growth and above average profitability. Smart firms are using CX and tying it specifically to business outcomes. CX absolutely drives client loyalty, it drives a revenue growth, it drives margin up, improves client lifetime value, shortens your win cycles. Most firms that I've worked with, the ROI on CX is it's not like 10 to one, it's like 1200 to one. It's, it's, it's pretty incredible what CX can, can do for an organization. That's, that's great. Yeah. And so, you know, last question I want to ask is really based around that is the, the value, but we'll talk about it from the client perspective. So I'm going to hire a firm and, you know, I've got three choices, let's say that they all come recommended and I pull up their websites and they all say they do the same things. And everybody that recommended them kind of, they says nice things about them. How does, how does a firm differentiate itself, you know, amongst its competition using client experience? It mu that must be a, a key point of differ differentiation. So let me ask you a question before I answer, Greg. Uh, when you were growing up, did you have any posters on your wall? I did, yeah. Or your posters, fast cars or... Lamborghini Kotash. Yeah, uh, right, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so as a young man, you had the uh, Lamborghini on your wall, and, and you're probably still, like me, aspiring one day to right, you know, right. buy that car, right? Yeah, right? And someone who gets to the point where they go to the Lamborghini dealer, do you think they feel bad about writing a check that big to go buy their Lamborghini? Right. right. right? Yeah. It's something they've aspired to. They have yeah. this emotional connection to it. Yeah. No one wakes up and says, today is the day I get to hire a wastewater engineer. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. But no one had the poster on the wall as a kid of an accountant with, the, you know, a pocket protector, or, you know, whatever you want to say. We don't have an aspirational offering. Yeah. Maybe architects, you know, might get away with that. But by and large, we don't have aspirational offerings. Yeah. We're a legally required or, you know, technically required piece of the equation. So we need to build some experiential connection both through our marketing and our brand reputation, through the sales process, the proposal process. I mean, proposals suck. Yeah. Writing them sucks, reading them sucks. Boy, if we can deliver a different experience, a more enjoyable experience in that process, buyers are gonna be more inclined to buy from us. If we talk about the experience that you're gonna have with us, we've designed an experience for you. Yeah, you're gonna get your wastewater treatment plant, but here's how we're gonna take care of you, the human all the way through and what your objectives are personally professionally connecting on that human level buyers are inclined towards people who they want to spend time with and work with buyers are inclined towards people that they like so experience management is really understanding your potential and your existing clients at that emotional level making that connection and then capitalizing on it to bring business in retain the business, grow the business. Then what happens is you got great work coming in the door. It's coming in reliably. They're not price shopping you because they want to buy from you. And your staff are showing up every day feeling like they're getting all the love because they're not dealing with frustrated clients all day who are being underserved. And so your staff retention becomes so much easier. Their satisfaction goes up. And they do better work because they're working from ahead rather than working from behind. So when you really look at the experience management ecosystem of um, uh, what's possible when you engage with these people at an emotional level, the outcomes are, are, are really pretty phenomenal. And I know I'm talking to an audience who maybe is a very technical audience, like what's all this fluffy duffy uh, emotion stuff? You can institutionalize empathy. You can institutionalize listening. These are, are proven, developable skills that you can roll out across an enterprise and create an, an organization that listens, that learns, that responds empathetically. 
and you're growing the organization, but you're also growing and nurturing better human beings inside the organization. So I, I think experience management is, is just one of the most satisfying things any organization can uh, take a journey on. Wonderful. Well, Ryan, thanks so much for joining today. If someone wants to learn more, uh, maybe attend CXPS next year, uh, where should they go and what should they do? Yeah, if you'd like to attend uh, CXPS uh, next year, you can go to clientexperience.org. We don't have the 2024 a content up yet, but you can see all the great stuff from 2023. We've recorded about 25 of the sessions this week. So th those of you who missed it can go watch some of the sessions. You'll also see several years of uh, past history on the website as well. And for those of you who are inspired by this, we also have a CX certification program that is a hands-on experiential journey itself to get you more deeply up to speed in some of the tools and approaches to CX. So if this is a curious or origin to you, reach out, uh, answers at clientsavvy.com or visit us at clientexperience.org and we'll be happy to see you there. Wonderful. Well, again, I'd like to thank Ryan Saddam, Chief Experience Officer at Client Savvy for joining the show. And if you weren't able to make it to CXPS this year, I highly recommend you mark your calendars for next year. And you can learn more about Ryan, Client Savvy, and CXPS Conference by following the links in the show notes. Thanks again for listening to the Agile Brand with Greg Kilstrom podcast, brought to you by Tech Systems. If you enjoyed the show, please take a minute to subscribe on your podcast channel of choice and leave us a rating so that others can find the show more easily. You can access more episodes of the show at www.gregkilstrom.com. That's G R E G K I H L S T R O M.com. To get a copy of my latest book, House of the Customer, visit my website or you can find it on Amazon or other retailers. The Agile brand is produced by Missing Link, a Latina owned, strategy driven, creatively fueled production co op. From ideation to creation, they craft human connections through intelligent, engaging, and informative content. Until next time, stay agile.